Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. <laughs> So the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer has finally came and I am so freaking excited. I'm here to talk about it with you guys. I'm really happy about it. And here we are talking about it and here's what I think. It's going to be okay from what I've seen so far. Honestly, most people know that I'm a huge Tobey Maguire Spider-Man fan. I always have. I'm one of the few people on this planet that likes Spider-Man 3 but hates certain things in it. And Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man was fine until shoehorn goblin and mecha rhino and then this guy comes out of the blue out of freaking nowhere in civil war and i'm just like oh my god we have a definitive spider-man but do we yes in the start of this trailer you honestly see peter parker fighting the some robbers dressed up as the avengers they're in avengers mess and it's uh and th I mean, that's the thing right there. It's humor. You know this movie is going to be funny. That part is locked up. You know it's going to be funny. You know it's going to be good. And that's what I love about it. But here's the thing. I just... Halfway through this trailer, I kind of just looked at my myself in the mirror and kind of said, this kind of feels like an Iron Man spinoff. Because once you see Robert Downey Jr., he's like, oh, no, no. Don't you go and fight that big bird man. No, 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 no. Don't go fight the big bird man because there's people that take care of that, like me and Captain America and all that. It's, it's, it, uh, I'm sorry, and Tobey Maguire, did someone come up to him and say, hey, you can't be Spider-Man, you need to learn how to be Spider-Man. This kid knows how to be Spider-Man. Don't tell him he doesn't. Don't tell him that he's like, oh, you gotta learn how to be a hero. It's like, this kid knows how to be a hero. He knows how to fight. He has freaking superpowers. And that's what the, like, the one thing that kind of ticked me off about this. It's like, they're trying to teach him to be a hero, but it's like, he's already a hero, he's got superpowers, he could defend himself, and he could probably fend off you pretty well, too, for a while. Uh, but as the trailer went on, I kind of just went forward. One thing that we don't see, we don't see Ant-Man in this trailer, and we don't see Shocker in this trailer, which is interesting, because one thing came to mind. Did they cut the Shocker scenes? Because if they cut the Shocker scenes, then I'm going to be really pissed off, because I want to see some Shocker in this movie. Four years ago, I wanted to write a Spider-Man movie, and I told myself, if there is ever another reboot, this was like in 2012, right after Amazing Sp Spider-Man came out, I was like, if there is ever another reboot, what they should do is do Shocker and Vulture, and boom, Marvel listened to me, there you go. But I hope they didn't cut that, and eh, man, eh, we don't need to see much of that. Really? Do we? No, we don't. But anyway, I want to get to the villain in this trailer. I've been really looking forward to seeing how the Vulture would be taken, because the last Vulture, as I said, was supposed to be in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. John Malkovich was supposed to play him, and the suit and design for him looked amazing, and I was so freaking happy when that was announced, and then it was cancelled. So now we got Vulture in this one being played by Michael Keaton, and after looking at the suit, I can honestly say that I am in the middle on it, I'm in the middle line. I like the classics, honestly. When I saw Electro in Amazing Spider-Man 2, I was like, where's the green and yellow suit with lightning bolts coming out of the mask? Where is that? I know it's Ultimate Electro, and I learned that after the fact I saw the movie, and it's like, I like the other one better, and that's why I didn't like the look. It, yeah, was it cool? Yeah. Did I like it? No. And then you see that the Vulture suit is actually... A kind of a mechanized vulture suit. It's huge! It's friggin' huge! It's bigger than a car! And yeah, he flies around, he's got lasers, and he's got a mask that looks kind of like a weird skull. One of those weird, um. What do you call that dude? The weird, uh. Skull birds in, uh, Mario? They kind of look like that. That's what it kind of looks like, but with light up eyes. And the voice, I didn't even recognize Michael Keaton because he's like. <sighs> Get in my way and I'm gonna kill everyone you love. Because it's like he's kind of doing that deep dark villain voice and he's doing that pretty well. And then finally in the end of this trailer you see that yes, Peter Parker's gonna have a love interest. I don't know what her name is. But we do know that it's not Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy. Actually, I don't do know what her name is. I just can't remember it at this point. And then right at the end of this you see 
Iron Man and Spider-Man flying together in the sky. And that's awesome. That was like the pinnacle point. I was like, full universe. We're good. And then I was just like, yeah, I thought this was pretty cool. So yeah, the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer, honestly, after I watched it, I felt a little better. And I'm going to honestly say that I'm going to give it three and a half star. No, I'm going to give it four stars out of five because I wasn't fully convinced yet. I'm probably going to need another trailer, but I am pretty solid on this besides the vulture kind of problems and the possible shocker being deleted from the movie. That would make me sad. But honestly, I did like it. So what did you think of the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer? Be sure to let me know in the comments below because I'm pumped. I'm Nighthawk, and I'll see you guys next time.